The Wine and She Show is a Metaverse and NFT discussion interview series brought to you by Metaverse Ventures Entertainment and host Ben 68 and More Cheats. Warning, the information and opinions within are solely the views of the individuals involved contains content not suitable for anyone. One is a wanker, one's like it's Thomas, one's from Australia, one's from the Bronx. Snack size. <laughs> this is what the metaverse will look like 20 years from now. The Ooh. metaverse of the future will transform how we wo- work and our sense of self. And what we see now is only scratching the surface. I yeah, agree absolutely. with that. I agree with we, that. We, every single week we say, yes, it's clunky, but it's not about it's not about what it is now. It's about where it's headed. And I talk about this in um, in my professional life as a kindergarten teacher. Like we do little projects and activities and that sort of stuff and some of my assistants are always worried about basically the kids stuff at the end it looks like dog shit um it's not about the end product it's about the process you know that kind of thing (laughs) your kids are going to grow up they're going to watch these and they're going to be like holy shit professor ben (laughs) professor he he said my drawing was dog shit (laughs) yes Indeed. Oh. oh, yeah, this goes on to say the metaverse will probably look a tad different than what you imagine it to be, a tiny little bit less ridiculous, a good amount of abundance, and a whole lot more real. And yes, you will be wearing a headset <laughs> acting as an entry point. No, you won't. You might. You know, some you of them glasses, you will. Like glass, I could, some of I, them you will. Like you'll be waking up in the morning and putting on your metaverse glasses, and then that'll yeah. be it. Again, going back to Upland, I think this is a very smart play that Upland's doing where they're going to have both possibilities as far as, you know, what they've been talking about. They will have immersive experiences that don't require that, but they're also going to cater towards the crowd that wants those kind of further things. I'm not checking your squirrel DMs you're sending me. You have to. (laughs) I got in trouble last time I did that. I'm not doing it. I can do it on my phone, actually. Then I won't get in trouble. Well, can you, right, you can you read this a little bit and I'll be back in exactly one minute. Time me. All right, go for it. All right. And I got to stop my video. You know why? <laughs> I got no idea. I don't think I want to know. We are without a fraction of a doubt seeing explosive growth when it comes to all things metaverse, NFTs and digitalization. The thing is, though, we're still in the beginning of it all and are very much in the early innings of the metaverse and its real life applications. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're all just fumbling around in the dark, basically, but the groundwork's being laid for what it could become. Um, now, there's there's videos there, and then I've highlighted this bit here. Um, first of all, there will be a number of metaverses for forming one all-encompassing metaverse, not just one, similarly to how countries are set up. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we just talked about before. Um, I will wait for cheese to get back before we dive into that. And yeah, because that's important. And I'll skip ahead and we'll just do this. So how are we going to enter the metaverse with a sick pair of wireless headsets, of course? Picture Google Glass or Snapchat spectacles. Now think about what those will look like now and then remember what phones used to look like 20 years ago. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was dead set against getting a smartphone until we moved back to japan and i think it was in 2011 or something like that and my wife was adamant that she wanted a an iphone and i pushed against it pushed against it but of course as you do with most things i lost out on that argument and we ended up getting them and then i was just fully on board with um, mobile gaming which turned into mobile game development and all sorts of stuff so yeah it's um it definitely starts off clunky and some of the the google glasses and some of the the okay <laughs> sunglasses and things that we've looked at previously um choose kind of thought they looked cool i thought they looked like shit but you could see the newer generations of them were starting to look a bit more cool so we'll see they'll, they'll evolve yes now i don't know if you heard but i was rambling past this highlight <laughs> a bit because i think this is um this is the meat and potatoes of this one all right so i already read that first bit so this is exactly what we're talking about where metaverses are going to be all encompassing you know and there's going to be interoperability connectedness and all that sort of stuff so you can you can pick it up from paragraph two all right Mm -hmm. 
all of these varying metaverses will eventually be interconnected and most importantly, inter interoperable. That's what that would, I can't say it because of, <laughs> but that's what we were talking about before that word interoperable, that meaning like they can like communicate or whatnot between. Yep. Um, that is of course, if the promise of web 3.0 comes into fruition, which it will, while existing independently, this plethora, plethora of metaverses will also function in unison, meaning denizens will be able to move ideally freely from one to the other and explore the various experience each one has to offer. So oh, that's cool. imagine you're playing around in the, in the Lux metaverse and there's a portal to go and jump into Upland. Well, you know, you, you put your avatar through that portal and being... But what is it? Bada bing, bada boom. Bada then, bing, you, bada boom. <laughs> then you find yourself in Upland and you can go and mint some properties in Rio and you do what you need to do there. And there's another portal there to jump to, I don't know, the mm -hmm. whatever the hell metaverse, the Roblox well, metaverse. Speaking of, of, of uh, Upland, like in, in the Vegas event, they even said that they'll be taking in other NFTs that aren't like there are in different blockchains. So that's, that's the beginning. Yep. And like, absolutely. Everyone who's like, Oh, um, Upland, you know, you can't do anything in Upland. Like you could do plenty in Upland and like, I don't want it to be some corny Decentraland or sandbox type of thing. Like I want an adult game. Like I want yep. what everything like that Upland is promising us to me. That's better than, than just walking around ordering fake yeah. food and i'll keep saying that like ordering fake food and this is not i want to do real things you know yeah absolutely and the fudders and the rage quitters will say oh our plans a scam because you can import your nfts but you can't take them out you know wow wow boohoo but they made that very clear from the outset if, if you're somebody who read that documentation and then imported all of your nfts and you can't get them out that's through no fault of anybody but yourself. Um, these things take time to implement. You have to have a long-term mindset because this is cutting-edge ed technology that's built, being built from the ground up. You know, you, you got to have patience. Oh, it's just kind of crazy. I have um, imported zero NFTs into Upland because I'm not willing to go there just yet. Yeah, same. And for, by all accounts setting up that portal is a just a monumental nightmare of clickety clicking so i just i got better things to do with my time than beat my head against the wall and then be able to put things in and not do anything with it so i have plenty of upland <clears throat> nfts ready to go and other nfts that i want to move in but i won't do that until the, the system has time to mature agree so it goes on to say the whole of the metaverse composed of all these mini metaverses will most likely enhance our reality and not fully displace it within an alternative one. And that's what you're saying as well, like as far as ordering food and, you know, whether it be buying clothes or, you know, having work meetings or anything like that. Exactly. Many, it's supposed to enhance it. Yeah. Many people think the concept of the metaverse is a strictly virtual world. That's not the point. Rather, it will add to what we know and can see all around us and able enable us to customize our environment in a myriad of detailed ways, making us more productive, more creative and happier. It's going to be a more augmentative, augmentative process and not one of replacement. Yeah. I like this article made me happier. <laughs> yeah. It's like I, an I, article. You know, the fear is, the fear is, you know, you're going to put your headset on and that's it. Your kids are going to starve and this, that, and the other thing that's, they that's might just, I mean, some people are weird. Oh yeah. Well, kids starve in the real world when there's no VR headsets, you know, there's, there's just dumb dead shit people out there who shouldn't have kids. That's How the metaverse is slowly transforming the workplace. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Look at these freaking websites. Can we don't just have get an rid ad of the blocker? internet? <laughs> well that's the thing i do but there's <laughs> pop-ups are out of control <laughs> as companies struggle to return employees uh low system resources my oh, god no. as companies struggle to return employees to offices full-time interest in virtual or virtual alternatives like the metaverse has surged providing new business opportunities for firms like new york-based 
IA interior architects, yada, yada, yada. Um, the coronavirus pandemic changed everything. These days, you're more likely to find this guy at home donning a virtual headset rather than visiting construction sites. So he's an architect. So and there's a pretty cool picture there where he's got his headset on and he's doing his architecty work at home. That's pretty cool. That's like like uh, similar to um, Lily. Yeah, she does architect. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, it's 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 going to be great for a whole wide range of industries. Obviously, there's there's service industries and things like that where this is not going to be a possibility. Like as much as I'd like to have a headset on and look after twenty two kindergarten children, that's it's just not a possibility. Yeah, it's um, not for everybody. Definitely, you know uh, what? Or the I garbage just, man. I want to say something weird. His ear is catching my attention like i want to i want to draw it because it's very deep you went away from his ear sorry i was trying to get rid of an ad but i clicked on what are you getting all... look at how detailed it is oh my god that could help me that could okay. help well, me go you, further the link's in the description cheese you can go and check that out later all right maybe i'll i'll have to beat it later <laughs> So frustrated by Zoom calls and those muted squares, this message guy said employers are increasingly seeking out new ways to engage workers nearly three years into the work from home experiment and they're finding that upgrades are much easier in the metaverse. Now, this next part I thought was really, really cool. Um, you want to take that over? We initially... <laughs> We initially thought along with clients that we would be replicating their office space that has not actually happened once, Mezik said. Virtual spaces have the branding and the feel and the look perhaps of the physical office, but you don't have the same rules. What does that mean? So basically like if, if, you're, a, if you're an architect, right? And you're used to going to your office, um, the kind of online metaverse um, setup that they're doing, it's not replicating that office that's too narrow focus. There's a world of opportunities here and it dives in further. So while this company's at Atlanta studio physical location was built near the city's midtown neighborhood, Messick and his team opted to transport the same structure to the coast of South Africa when it came to designing the metaverse. Ooh. Employees have since taken to hosting happy hours and brainstorming sessions along the virtual waterfront in the absence of face-to-face -face gatherings. That's awesome. Messick said, Yep, that the designers have placed particular attention to the use of biophilia, making sure that water rippling or grass and trees moving inside the virtual world are as close to real life as possible. So yeah, you don't need to make the virtual workspace a boring, drab, bloody white booth sort of thing. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. That's the whole point. It's the world is what you want to make of it. Wow. And yeah, what so is that picture of? An example of what? Well, it says here, we did a lot of design study groups, both internally and externally, and consistently the top two <coughs> requests were outdoor spaces and vistas. So yeah, an example of BCG's metaverse. So and this, this is always the classic um, sci-fi thing. Like if you watch any of those space movies where people have to travel for long distances, you always see in, the, in many of them, you see like the, the person who's been in, in stasis or whatever for many years they're sitting behind a screen or sitting looking at a screen of waterfalls and nature, and then they click a button and it goes to the different view. Yeah. You know, there's, there's something, there's something very, there's something within the human psyche that needs that. Like I know, I know when I, when I first visited Japan and I visited Tokyo and I went up into one of the high towers and I, my brain couldn't comprehend that, I could look in 360 degrees to the horizon and all I could see was buildings and concrete. It just freaking blew my mind. I was like, this doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know what it's like in the States. So I assume it's similar to Australia. I can't go anywhere in Australia and not look in the distance on the horizon and see a mountain, um, trees, you know, like full on forest trees or the ocean or the beach or something. I, I, I can't imagine living in an environment like that where you're just surrounded by the human chaos. 
You know, there's no natural em- elements to it. Well, no, the U.S. is is definitely different. Um, like New York, of course, is big, but if you go up into the Empire State Building, you can see yeah. kind of beyond the buildings. And where I am, there's nothing but surrounding me with mountains in, yep. in the valley. And uh, especially in Arizona, they prohibit buildings being built too high. They have actual a height limit. And uh, you could see a lot of sky here, which is is very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it just, it kind of blew my mind. Like when I decided to move to Japan to live, I specifically chose a city that was not Tokyo because I, I just couldn't imagine. Some people thrive in that and they love that, that kind of hustle and bustle, chaos and whatever. But I just, I needed some kind of nature. So I moved out amongst the rice fields. I had a way better time. So yeah, it's, it's really cool. And yeah, if, if you're stuck in a cubicle for eight, 10 hours a day and you know, you're looking at your white wall all day. Well, what do people do? They put up pictures of their family. They put up pictures of where they want to go on holidays. Well, imagine being in a virtual, a virtual workspace where that's your actual background. You know, pick yeah. it to be whatever you want. So, and an, another good example is this video game I played with that I played, which plays on the mind heavy. It's it's a it's a horror game. And um, it talks about virtual reality and what it means for your subconscious to actually go somewhere. And it's very clever. And the ending is so crazy. Like, I'm not going to ruin it for anyone, but the name is Soma, S-O-M-A. And um, I mean, don't play it if you don't like scary (laughs) games because it's really scary, but it's worth it's worth a play. You know, definitely, if you're not scared. <clears throat> what was that picture of up there? Absolutely. Um, it's like a virtual virtual meeting room. Oh. That sort of thing. So that's kind of more traditional, I would say. Yeah. You, you know, it says here, um, the virtual office space designed by Munich based Arthur Technologies includes snowy resorts and tropical retreats. Users can exchange post-it notes, share ideas on a whiteboard and sip on virtual drinks while conducting private conversations within a group setting. So I think after two years of Zoom, um, most people are exhausted and sick of looking at their own picture and sick of being on there. So who knows, maybe in two years, the one and two show will have our own little metaverse space somewhere. And maybe it, it might be a platform like the Lux if there's some recordable operability there where instead of us being two talking heads on Zoom, there's a bit more functionality there. Yeah, that would be fun. First, so, I got to yeah, get I... back to us on the NFT so I could get it out for you guys. <laughs> I, I checked last night before I went to bed and there was nothing there. And I'd ping them specifically. Let me just check that again before I... Uh, yep nothing crickets um yeah so yeah i think a mixed reality is what you'll be observing your office in a way it is now you'll be greeting people from other locations as avatars and holograms we think that's in the very near future so yeah no that's cool kind of almost makes me want to go out and get an office job (laughs) no (laughs) no yeah but i definitely like my children once they're in the the kind of workforce that's going to be a, a huge part of their lives Undoubtedly. Oh yeah. Fire, the 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 the